Hi, my name is Kristen Lowe, and we are going to be finishing up your financial disclosure. So, if you remember, we have FL 140. This is the FL 141, and you have 142 and 150. So you should have already completed 140, 142, and 150. And this is kind of the document that wraps it up. And it is the world's longest title, and don't get scared by it. It's actually a very easy form, but it's a horrible name. So it's called the Declaration Regarding Service of Declaration of Disclosure and Income and Expense Declaration. Okay, so let's check on the box, and let's take you to the top. Very, very familiar by now. It is absolutely 100% standard. We're going to fill in the name, and we're going to use this from the petitioner's point of view. So we have John Smith, and John Smith's address is 124 Rose Street and in San Ramon, California, 94582. And we're going to put down his phone number, which is 415-442-5577. And we don't need a fax number, we don't need an email address because we're in Contra Costa County. But we are going to put in pro per, meaning he is self-represented or you are self-represented or in propia persona would be the other way to put it. So, again, we are in the county of Contra Costa. The address for the court is 751 Pine Street. The mailing address is P.O. Box 911. The city and zip code would be Martinez, California, 94544. I'm sorry, that's 94553. And the branch name is the Peter L. Spinetta Family Law Center. So by now you've already been down to the courthouse. You should be very familiar with that glass building. Hopefully you haven't had to make too many trips. Um, so the petitioner is going to be John Smith. And the respondent's going to be Jane Smith. And the case number, you should have your case number. Just as a reminder, it should be the same case number as your original documents. We always put the same case number. In 2015, it's always going to be D15, D15, dash, and then whatever five digit number it is. So please make sure to fill out your case number. Keep the clerks happy, they are your best friends. So in this case, we are talking about the petitioner. We're gonna check the box petitioner, and we're gonna check the box preliminary. So as a reminder for the court filing hours, it is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. And that's in Martinez, where we only have one family law center in Martinez. So just as usual, we've taken out the caption because you have moved past the caption and we want to get into the substance of it. Remember, we are doing the petitioner's preliminary declaration of disclosure. If you are the respondent, the only difference in the form is you are going to check that box respondent. It's still going to be preliminary. What does preliminary mean? It means the first time you're doing these documents. And the number one question I get, and I'm going to answer it with every one of the four mandatory disclosures, do I have to do it? The answer is yes, even though the answer is yes. But what if the answer is doesn't matter? Um, I get this question probably more than I get asked of anything else. We don't own anything. Do I have to fill it out? The answer is yes. But we have a full agreement. Do we have to do it? The answer is yes. I don't want my spouse to know what I have. Do I still have to do it? The answer is yes. I can't think of a single scenario that the answer would be no, you get a get out of jail free card, you don't have to do it. And the reason for that is the law is very clear. You must do the preliminary declaration of disclosure in order to get a divorce. You might as well be asking me, do I have to file a petition in order to get a divorce? Do I have to file a divorce decree to get a divorce? The answer is always yes. And the reason for that is the law has very clearly stated, what do you need to do to get a divorce? And this is one of those mandatory steps you need to get a divorce. So. This form is actually easy. If you are actually at this step, that means you've actually done all the work theoretically. This is your declaration and the title, as long as it is, is it does mean something. So this is your declaration stated under penalty of perjury that you have served your declaration of disclosure, which is the FL 140 and your income and expense declaration, which is your FL 150, as long with your other financial disclosures. So let's get started. You are, if you are self-represented, you are the petitioner in this matter. So again, if you're the respondent, you're gonna check the respondent. Who are you is the question. If you're a petitioner, you check petitioner. If you're a respondent, respondent. The form, we have John Smith, the petitioner, so we're filling it out. 
and it is his. You cannot verify somebody else's financial disclosures. So you are the petitioner. Keep it consistent. So petitioner and number two, we're going to check the box petitioners also. So the petitioner's preliminary declaration of disclosure, that's the FL140. Current, meaning income and expense declarations, that's the FL150. And the schedule of assets and debts, which is your 142. You can do the 160 if you want. This series covers the 142 because that's the most commonly used one and the one that I recommend personally to do. So you've done that plus all tax returns filed by the party in the last two years. So it has a number of components. This is your declaration saying you did all of that. And you served it on who? You would serve it on, if your spouse is self-represented, you're going to serve it on the other party. You're going to check that box. Our scenario has both sides self-represented. So we're going to check that box. If your spouse or the respondent is represented by an attorney, you want to check the box, other attorney. Now you have a question, and we've gone through this a number of times, which is how do you serve? This is optional. You don't need a notice and acknowledgement of receipt for this document. If you want to serve by mail, that's fine. That's your normal proof of service by mail. Or you can do it personally. But you need to state which one you have done it by. So personal service, mail, or other. The only other that would apply is if you agreed and had filed the proper forms for electronic service. So in most cases, it's going to be mail. So we're going to go standard run of the mill and say that John has served Jane by mail. Go up. Okay, and this is the next part which is most people forget, which is the date that it was served on. And understand that because this is a mandatory document in order to get a divorce, if you miss that date, your entire divorce judgment will get bounced back or rejected because you missed the date. So filling out this form, it is easy, but you must do it correctly. So petitioner, petitioner, the other party by mail on what date? What date did John do it? Well, let's pick a date. Let's pick um, April 1st, 2015. So again, you must fill out every part of this. Since this is the preliminary declaration of disclosure, we do not need to fill out the rest of this form. So you get a get out of jail free card. This is the preliminary declaration of disclosure. You only need to do numbers one and two. So let's skip down to the bottom. Three and four are not going to apply to you. And you are going to type or print your name. So in this case, it's John Smith. As usual, the date is above your printed name, so whatever date he wants to date it, and then he'll need to sign it. This document, unlike 140 and 142, do, does get filed with the court. So we've been over this a bunch of times, but remember, 140 does not get filed with the court, but it does get served on your spouse. This is 141. This does get filed and served on your spouse. 142 does not get served, or sorry, does not get filed with the court, is served on your spouse. And FL 150 is filed and served on your spouse. So this is one of the two of the four that gets served and filed with the court. So it's very important. This document is mandatory in order to get divorced. There is no exception as the petitioner for filing the preliminary declaration of disclosure. Um, hope this helps. Please fill it out correctly. Don't forget those dates. And then we're going to keep going on the series. So congratulations. Take a deep breath. You are done. We have finished your financial disclosures with this form, which is your FL-141, your declaration regarding service of declaration of disclosure and income and expense declaration. And with this form completes all of your financial disclosures. As a reminder, you're going to need to file this one, which is your FL-141, as well as your income and expense declaration, which is your FL-150 with the court. You're going to serve all four documents on your spouse, which are the FL-140, FL-141, FL-142, and FL-150, but you only file two of those with the court. I know it's a little confusing, so just remember, you have to serve all four, but you only file your FL-150 and FL-141 with the court. So this concludes our video series on how to begin your divorce. Congratulations. Take a deep breath. You are making really good progress towards finalizing your divorce. I wish you the best of luck in your case. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call at 925-215-1388 or you can reach out to me by email. My email address is kristen at kristenlowlaw.com. Best of luck to you in your California divorce.